video is part of the 5 under 5 DIY challenge with the theme Dollar Tree Decor. More about that after the first project. Project number one. Narrow shelf. We're going to make this with two 5x7 canvases and two of these narrow wood signs. And then um, I chose to embellish them with some vinyl and that's just for looks and um, because it's only paper there right now i wanted to put some vinyl in but you don't have to this is going to cost you right around five dollars to make um, i got these when they were a dollar each so it cost me four but uh, the embellishments come from my stash and here i'm attempting to remove the word from the frame with as little damage as possible these frames though they on the narrow edges there the short ends they want to come up like the long sides are fine they lift up with that little cricket tool there but when i try to lift up on the short sides there the whole thing comes up so you have to mess around with it with uh, if you have like a utility knife or you know an exacto knife or something it can be done but you know just be aware that it's been my experience that these frames do that on the ends so i'm cutting some vinyl to size and i'm using my cricut tool to smooth it down there is a really um visible crease but when i smooth it down with my cricut tool it smoothed the crease right out so i have both of the narrow word signs covered in vinyl and then we're going to work on the five by seven canvases um, some people do what you call a reverse canvas where they take the canvas off the top and put it in the back but we're actually just going to leave the canvas right off so um dollar tree r was wrapping their canvases uh, in plastic i don't know if they still do i haven't been there for a little bit so uh you could just score it with a knife and rip off the canvas or you could rip off the canvas and then take the stables off that's kind of what i did i started taking the stables off and it's having a little bit of difficulty so i used my cricut pokey tool after i took the canvas off and i was able to get the pokey tool in underneath the staple and raise it up and then i removed it with a pair of pliers and it's a little bit time consuming it's kind of like the time consuming uh wrapping or if you wrap a frame with rags or rope or whatever so i wanted uh, a little bit of cohesiveness and since the narrow frames are a darker brown i made this concoction of gray and burnt umber and I used a very damp baby wipe and a light hand uh, for the most part but when it came to where the staple holes were i actually squeezed the the wipe into the holes and so that kind of evened it up whereas before if i just rubbed the wipe over it it kind of didn't absorb in the color so you did have to uh you do have to like squish the uh, moisture from the wipe into the holes i grabbed four of these tumbling tower blocks and i chose the flat side to glue just to give the shelf some legs. And um, you know, I always glue, uh, usually the two kinds of glue. In this case, it's the wood glue and the hot glue. And so I did that for all four legs. And now for the bottom of the shelf, you see I put down three brush strokes of wood glue and then one on either side of the hot glue. I'm just going to hold this frame here for a little bit. And it actually just stays there like that. I do the exact same thing on the next side using the wood glue in the middle and the hot glue on either side. 
And then what's going to happen is when I put the frame on top, it pretty much holds the thing together instead of, you know, pressing down on it or putting clamps on it or whatever. So it's kind of hard to show. I will give you a better look at it during the final reveal. The 505 challenge happens every month on the 5th. The challenge is to create five projects, each costing $5 or less to make. Our hosts are Emily from Farm Charm Chic and Missy from Crafty Cove DIY. This month's guest host is Annalie from Annalie Ashby DIY. Their channel links, as well as a link to the playlist, will be in my description box below. Enjoy! Project number two. This time it's a narrow shelf. And this one, like the previous shelf, is about four or five dollars if you want to recreate it. Um, the two arrows are dollar each as are the palettes. I made mine with uh, three palettes, three shelves, so mine's a little bit extra, but you can make it with two shell two little shells just fine. So to start things off, we remove the staples from the hanging cords, and then we mix up uh, watered down acrylic paint, and you can choose your color. I've used blue before with a white distress and kind of liked it, so I thought I would try it this time because I wanted it to be much different than the previous shelf. So the first one there, it's a little bit heavy handed with the slathering, um, otherwise known as painting. <laughs> so um, when I got to the arrows, I knew not to fill in the color because the um, baby wipes are going to fill in the color for you. And the baby wipes are really good to get the edges to. It's much easier to use a baby wipe on the edges than it is to try and cover it with a paintbrush. So I didn't get the distressing part. I had some battery issues. So I'm just showing you here how I use this flaky paintbrush and just kind of flick it across, but with a little bit of downward pressure. So I start at one edge and flick the paintbrush across and uh, if I if I let up on the pressure, there just just won't be as much white paint. But yeah, so got that done with everything, and now I'm uh, I prepared the little tumbling tower blocks. I made two for each shelf, so I made six. If you're doing two shelves, and you only need four, and I did the first two right at the very very bottom, and I actually used another tower block to hold it there to make sure it's even and then I let go and I checked to see if that was going to work and I was not surprised but I was happy that happy to see that it would and I'm showing you that I'm only going to glue two of the slats on the palette so you're going to glue the two middle slats so one slat is going to have wood glue and the other slat is going to have just hot glue and i vary it on either side i'm not sure why in my mind i'm thinking it has a better grip if i do it that way and um i chose to use the tumbling tower blocks because i didn't trust just gluing the palette but nor did i trust just setting it on the blocks so I did both and then I did the middle one exactly the same and now I'm showing you how I'm doing the top one. I made a straight line across where the arrow flares out and then I did my blocks even with that line to get a good uh, even top shelf. And again using wood glue and hot glue on the different slats and setting it down and some of the glue does rub against the edges on the arrow there and if you get that right away you should be okay i don't show this but i do go in afterwards with my industrial size stapler and staples shelves better look at the final reveal project number three together sign i'm using a 
near a home sign and another Dollar Tree placement. I'm not sure if Dollar Tree still has this a style of narrow sign, but you could use any narrow sign. And so it would cost you $2 and change to if you decided you wanted to make something like this. So I took out the insert and it's all one piece and uh, the word home is glued nicely on it. So I didn't mess with it. I just left it as is and I'm using it as a template to try and figure out what part of the placemat I want to cut out. Um, any of the words would have been nice, but didn't like how it would have been placed in that space. So like there would have been too much room at the end or too much room at the beginning. So I chose together because that fit the space the best. Like the previous project, I just outlined it with one of my Funzel chalk markers and then just carefully cut out the shape with a regular pair of scissors. No knife, no cutting mat, nothing like that. And there's even like a bit of a rounded uh, corner there that I left and it was just perfect. Like I couldn't have asked for it to be more perfect the way it, it fit in. So I was happy for that. And I showed you that I liked the other signs too. So this um, frame is pretty shiny, like one would say glossy. So I'm just taking some Dollar Tree sandpaper and I'm trying to dull down the gloss um, to give some adhesion to the paint that I want to put on this. I want it to look a little bit more woodsy. So I'm using again the gray and burnt umber acrylic paint and a nice damp baby wipe and if you just wipe it regular like you're used to like a medium hand it just goes on like too transparent and i was like oh a little bit frustrated so i'm like okay let me think what i can do here so when i got to the top part of the frame i used a much lighter hand and that seemed to leave more color on. So that's what I started doing. I would go over it with a very, very light hand and a lot of paint would stay. And if not enough stayed, or if it wasn't dark enough, I just went over it again. Or if it was too transparent, I went over it again. Or if it was too dark, I wiped it without paint till I was happy with all the colors. Then I went ahead and put the together word into the frame and then put the home uh, piece of wood on top and look together we make a family and i'll give you a better look at the final reveal project number four home sweet home this is one of the more popular Dollar Tree crafts and you can make yours for $2 or oh, two and change for the, if you use a placemat and a pizza pan. I didn't have a pizza pan, so I'm using a charger, but since it has a smaller flat area, I'm going to glue the placemat to a wood round and then glue the wood round to the charger. So the charger acts more like a background and a border. So starting things off, I went ahead and traced the size of the wood round on the placemat and then just used a regular pair of scissors to cut it out. And I left it all in because I wanted to show you how easy it was to cut this. You don't have to worry about cutting mat or utility knife or anything like this. Just trim it to size. Fits perfect. On to the next task of this project, which is painting the charger. So since the edges are all that's going to show, that's all I'm going to paint. And I like to do it back and forth like this. I think it looks better than trying to paint it around or paint it straight. I like the back and forth. So I'm just flicking the brush from the middle to the outside edge. And this is sped up a little bit, but 
it shows how I do it and how I recommend you doing it. Okay. So that actually dried and I came back and now I'm gluing the wood round onto the charger. The placemat is already glued onto the charger. And I used uh, the hot glue in all the other areas. Now as far as the uh, placemat being glued onto the wood round, I did use a spray glue, but it ended up lifting, so hot glue would be fine, just hot glue on the edges. So the wood round is adhering to the charger plate. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little drill here to create two holes for a hanging rope. And that is one good thing about using the charger is it's fairly easy to drill a hole through it. More so in the middle area, but still. I chose to create a rope border for mine. You don't have to. I like to make rope borders on lots of things. If you saw my last video, you saw me make a rope border for my popsicles. It's just something that I like to do. And it's easy to do. I'm just using hot glue for this. And then once I get all the way around, then I will trim the rope. I don't like to trim it until I'm done. Okay, so here's the awareness ribbon shape. I just set it out to show you. And then I'm gonna pick it up and scrunch it together. I'm cutting off a piece of twine in order to accomplish that. There we go. And I'm making this bow a little bit wider than usual because sometimes um, I cinch it and it's too small. It looks kind of funny. So I'm having a nice wide bow, but I am going to trim the tails up nice and short so they don't cover any of the words. These are Dollar Tree uh, flowers, but I also add in some Timu flowers because the pick was already cut into. You don't even have to use flowers if you don't want to. I like to add flowers. I created two little bouquets for each side, and then you see me putting down the glue there. And I kind of curved the little bouquet and then I set it on top of the glue. I did the same on the other side. Now I'm jamming the rope through the little holes that I drilled. I'm going to tie a knot and then trim the excess. Like so. Okay, better look at the final reveal. Project number five. Easy hello sign. I'm making this sign with a Christmas sign from Dollar Tree and a galvanized hello sign. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is gonna be a lot of screenshots. I had a terrible time with some corrupted uh, video. So here I'm covering up the buffalo check because that was my favorite part of the sign. I wanted to make sure I saved that. I'm going to go ahead and use a, one of those foam paint dabbers to paint the hello sign. I find that that's easiest and it gets me the best coverage. Then I'm taking a uh, regular paintbrush in white and defining each letter from the word because there was no definition. I painted the sign black in the middle first to cover up the color and then two more coats of white because white was what I really wanted. I'm uh, realizing that the hello sign, I, I took it off the base, but the metal is like really hard. It's not flimsy or foldable at all. So I'm going to have to use some tumbling tower blocks to compensate for the height of the, the base part that's left there. I was hoping I could bend it all the way up and hide it behind the letters, but it would not bend at all, at all. So you'll see me doing my glue thing. I went ahead and put on some super glue there. And then I'm also going to put on some hot glue. And I um, colored them black with my Funcil dot marker because I kind of wanted them 
to fade into the background just in case they were noticeable it would be more like a shadow than actually seeing the block okay and that's what it looks like and i think the definition of the letters came out really good now i'm really bummed that my bow part of this video also didn't get filmed because it's a pretty cool bow so i chose to put the word hello right in the very middle and to put a bow in the top left corner there so i went ahead and made my regular bow with the um, awareness ribbon cinch it tight tight and then i did shoelace bow with that letter ribbon but it wasn't covering up there was a little bit of uh, the buffalo check got ripped up and that wasn't being covered so i made a loop and i put that on diagonal underneath the bow and then i had a really cool full bow that covered up that little tear I used some scrap rope for the hanging cord and better look at the final reveal. Mm -hmm.